Philip de Thur is one of the world's foremost authorities on the design and construction of watches with many complications. In 1993, he presented a special five-day course for the American Watchmakers Clockmakers Institute. The course was conducted at AWI's Project Extend Education Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, the week of October 25th through the 29th. Mr. Defour resides in the village of Le Santier, located in the famous Valley de Joux of Switzerland. He has worked for such famous companies as Audemars Piguet and Jaeger Le Coultre. His work has taken him from Switzerland to London, England, and the Virgin Islands as well. Mr. Defour uses a carefully selected mix of both old and new tools to accomplish the extremely high levels of complications and quality that have become his trademark. In addition to the repeating clock watches highlighted in this film, Mr. DeFour also designed and built the prototype for the instantaneous perpetual calendar used by this prestigious firm of Daniel Roth. The horological world will certainly be hearing of more complicated designs by Philip DeFour in the future. For now, watch and listen with us as Mr. DeFour explains and demonstrates his unique repeating clock watches with Grand and Petit Sonore. I am presenting to you a pocket size clock watch minute repeater. A clock watch is a watch which strikes the hours and the quarters in passing, that means automatically, and which is also provided with a minute repeating work striking hours, quarters and minute at any time when the push button when the winding crown is activated. The case band slides A and B are used to choose the striking mode. A silence and strike and B quarters only or all in quarters petite or grand sonnery. A pressure on the button C coaxial to the welding crown release the hour, quarter and minute repeater. You just heard the watch striking in the grand sonnery mode, that means the hour and the quarter at every quarter. Now we're going to set the watch in the petit sonnery mode, that means it will strike only the quarter at every quarter and the hour at the hour. I am presenting to you a wrist size clock watch minute repeater. 
A clock watch is a watch which strikes the hours and the quarters in passing, that means automatically, and which is also provided with a minute repeating work striking hours, quarters and minute at any time when the push button on the wedding crown is activated. The case band slides A and B are used to choose the striking mode. A, silence and or strike, and B, quarters only or hours and quarters, petite or grandsonry. A pressure on the button C, coaxial to the widening crown, release the hours, quarters and a minute repeater. With this 19-line uh, movement of a uh, clock watch minute repeater, I will uh, uh, show you some part of the mechanism. The watch is uh, is not finished yet. It's uh, uh, in uh, working condition, but the decoration, general waves, and the polishing are not done yet. You are going to see the striking mechanism, what we call in French the quadrature. It's uh, all the mechanism which is under the dial, the one you don't see it. I press on the button on the crown wheel to activate the minute repeater. All the quad quarter and minute track are down in the snail and the watch can strike. You can see from this side the watch is provided with two bars. One on the left it's a striking bar and on the right is a going bar. Both are equipped with a Maltese cross stopping device. And uh, could you uh, show us how the um, uh, mechanism operates um, as the watch is in the, in the sun array mode? Yes, we have the two lever on the right and on the left are made to select the mode of the striking. This one on the right, it's for petite or grand sonnery quarters only or all in quarters and the one on the left it's for silence or strike and um, if you were to move the hands uh, to pass a quarter hour would the watch operate at this point well I have to turn in 90 degrees yes. and I pull the stem and I turn hands. That means when I turn the hands, the automatic release system is disengaged. Could uh, set the hands to uh, just before a quarter and, and let the watch uh, strike. Okay. Maybe uh, grand sonnery mode, yes. Of course. Here we're a bit before the quarter. And we'll be in grand sonnery mode, and I have to set the lever on the top now in the striking system. Ah. Okay.
crooked. It happens very fast, you know? Yes. Here we have the quarter, the mini track here on the top with the mini track uh, finger which goes down in the minute snail. Yes, and uh, if, if we could see the snails, if we were to move, remove the um, hour wheel. Yes, and, the snail uh, is underneath. Okay. And here you have the quarter rack on the bottom. And uh, you have all the, the uh, release mechanism on this uh, axe, on the staff of the what we call the center wheel, striking yes. center wheel. And, and how many um, devices are stacked underneath that particular point there? One, one, two, wait a minute, I think six, about six, six yeah. Yes. Okay, I can activate the mini tributary. You will see uh, all the racks are dropping in this snail. Okay. Nice. I'll go further look around the watch. And uh, this area of the watch um, has a lot of the. Um, Automatic um, release um, for the Grand and Petit Sonar. Right? Exactly this one here. Uh -huh. and, uh, and this one here on the top, on the right, it's uh, the lever, big lever. This one yes. for the manual release. Oh. When, when I press, you see, oh, see. down, and it releases. Mechanism. Yeah. This lever is working with the next one, which is underneath here, huh. through a little pin here. I do again the function. It's lifting the, the second lever through the pin. Okay, you see it? Oh, yes. Okay, and. Interesting, and, and um, another section of the watch um, would be to your left and lower. You have the big here. You have the, the part of the minute rack. Oh, okay. Ah. And with the big, and this big is acting against a little pin here, and it push the stopping device, which is through a pin stopping the uh, escapement uh, lever. That's the escapement um, lever for the um, striking train. Correct? Striking train, yes, exactly. Not, this, not for the going train. No. Uh -huh. Very nice. And here you have the minute trip, oh, yes. which is a spring here. Uh -huh. yes. This is very interesting. It's very nice. And here you have the the gathering rack, which is pivoted here, and it goes here. And a segment of teeth are meshing with the gathering rack pinion, which is on the staff of the center wheel. The center wheel of the striking train. Striking train, yeah. Very beautiful. And uh, maybe now we could have a look at the uh, other side of the line. Yes, okay. okay. And uh, Philip, you say that the um, the plates have not uh, been finished, correct? Yes, right. And all the screws, the screw heads. Uh, yes, the, the screw heads are still uh, rough. They have been too, they need to be polished. The index, uh, end stone plate, the uh, stud cover, the hammer, the block for the gang, all the screws, the sink for the the jewel has to be uh, uh, polished before uh, the decoration, the Geneva waves and the uh, nickel plating. Yes, and, and uh, the movement would also be engraved before it's finished. Yes, of course, it would be engraved uh, in this era and also 
on the part of the center wheel bridge here. I see. But you will wait to do that until the watch has been finished and sold? Yes, yes. Maybe we can put uh, the name of the customer or, right. or you know, everything it's uh, it's it's open, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. We can do what what we want really for, for the decoration. Okay. Oh, go ahead. And here you can see we have uh, two train. One train here from the center till the third and fourth and the escape wheel, the pallets and the balance. It's for the going side of the watch. And this one on the right is a train for the striking mechanism with uh, intermediate wheel, the center wheel we just took before, first wheel, second, escape wheel of the striking mechanism and the pallet. You have the gong here with two screws and a, a steel wire going from each side. On the top it's a minute wire and on the bottom the hour wire. You can act the minute hammer against the gun. We have also uh, we have two train. That means we have also two bar. A small one for the going and a large one, the largest as possible, to have uh, enough power to activate the striking mechanism. Now we can see the function when the watch is striking. The hour, quarter, and the minute. Actually, the the speed of the of the, of the track is a little bit too too fast. We can adjust adjust it with uh, a special screw here. And uh, could you show us uh, maybe how the uh, winding mechanism works on this side of the watch? Well, I think it's nearly fully wound. I mean, one way I wind the going side, and the other way I wind the strike mechanism. Strike. So when one watch is winding, the other one is passing. Yes. The clicks are passing. Is recoiling. Yeah, recoiling. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. It's a very elegant system. Yeah. Very nice. The movement side for the pocket watch, that means 19 line, and the wrist watch has got some little difference. Instead of having the train on line with the stem, the stem, I show you the stem, it's on the, the stem is here. That means we have the fourth wheel, which is line, on line with the, with the stem, because it's an open face watch. For the wrist watch, I had to put, to have the train going from the center to, I rotate, the complete train to be 90 degrees with the stem. That means we have we have the center, third and fourth escape wheel in this side, and the cock bridge is at the opposite opposite direction. Uh, the only change is um, the other change is uh, uh, the beat of the watch. Instead of having 18,000 beat, I put it a bit higher till uh, 21,600. And the, the wristwatch hasn't got any index because I've got a, what we call an inertia block balance. So it is essentially a pre sprung watch. Though. Yeah, that's exactly. Yes. Otherwise, the rest of the mechanism is uh, it's exactly the same. Even the shape of the bridges are the same. And about how many parts are in these watches? 
about three three hundred ninety with the case and all I mean the, the sliding system ar around the in, inside the case band. Uh, the watch is, is now in, in a working case. Yes, exactly. It's just brass and uh, yes. when it is sold it will be yes. properly fit to a gold case. Yes. This one I use it to show uh, people and customer uh, how it works uh, a clock watch. Very beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome.